Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to make balen de lait. Uh, balen de lait are uh, similar to the German kohlrolag, uh, stuffed cabbage, um, but this is the Lithuanian version. Doing another Lithuanian dish because people seem to like this sort of food on my channel, so we'll, we'll see more of that. Balen de lait are um, basically uh, cabbage leaves which have been stuffed with pork, onions, spices, uh, kind of similar to the inside of uh, Zeppelin, the uh, Zeppelin um, dumplings that I covered in a previous video. Now, uh, stuffed cabbage in uh, Eastern Europe and uh, Germany, uh, Central and Eastern Europe, are a very common um, dish. They are delicious. Um, and there are versions of it from just about every country uh, around. So this is this one. Uh, on to the ingredients. So for the first phase, the primary ingredients I'm looking at here are cabbage and salt. And we'll separate all the cabbage leaves and cook them a little bit so that they're nice and pliable. Um, and we will cook them with the salt. For the filling, we have pork. Uh, we have um, rice. This is 500 grams of pork to 100 grams of rice. An onion, about 100 grams, so about the same weight as we have of rice. Um, some salt, some pepper, and something, whatever um, one decides in terms of spices. I've seen basil used in similar dishes, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Um, I've seen some other recipes that suggest maybe tarragon. But uh, I think I'll do this one with basil. When stuffed, these will be tossed in flour and fried in oil. And uh, I might need a little more flour than this, but this is a good starting amount. Finally, at the end of the sauce, we'll have uh, about 30 milliliters or so of tomato and 100 grams, so about half of this uh, packet of sour cream. And that'll go into the sauce. And uh, then we'll have our, our delicious bandele, uh, sorry, balendele. And then we'll have our delicious balendele. Now the first step is actually to um, half cook the rice. So I've added some water because of the fact that we're not fully cooking the rice. Um, it doesn't really matter um, if I have too much water. And I'm going to boil this for about 10 minutes or so, and then I'm going to strain it in a colander. Um, you know, this is not Asian food. Um, straining uh, straining half-cooked rice uh, can be a good way of, um, of um, processing it for some dishes such as this. On my other burner, I'm going to start a big pot of water, and I, I'm going to well salt it. And I'm going to let this come to a boil. Once this is boiling, or this is cooked for... Uh, 10 minutes and I will be back. So now um, this rice is actually cooked for, in this case, five minutes or so, but it's already, I think, about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour it into my colander and I'm gonna run cold water over it to kind of quickly stop the cooking process. And you'll notice that this is, well, this rice is not quite done. And that's exactly what we want. Um, now the reason for doing this is that we're going to cook um, everything in the um, in the uh, stuffed cabbage together. You could probably use day-old rice the same way you would for fried rice, but um, I think uh, I think at this point um, I'm going to just standard use the standard half-cooked rice for now. So to make the filling. I'm going to start with my rice, pour it in the middle. I'm going to take my um, ground pork, and I'm going to just uh, crumble it on top. I'm going to add my onions. I'm going to add um, some salt, season it with salt, and um, pepper, you can freely grind your own, 
Um, I will do most of the grinding off the camera because since I like to do my own uh, ground pepper, um, it's just worth noting that this takes a minute or two. So I'll come back and do a little more of that. Um, and again, this is all to taste, so feel free to experiment. Um, as far as seasonings, uh, one thing to note is that large parts of uh, uh, the world um, found that spices were very expensive for a very long time. Uh, and so, uh, while pepper is one of those things that's been sort of continuously imported everywhere, and um, some time ago was more expensive than, say, gold, um, a lot of stuff could be grown at home, and so things like basil, tarragon, other herbs, uh, sort of became some of the mainstays of cooking, uh, especially in um, you know in in many different uh, cuisines in the West. So, when we think about some spices, typically they're going to be locally growable things like uh, basil um, or tarragon. So now I'm going to mix this together. And uh, I'll come back when it's fully mixed. And so here is the filling fully mixed. And this is smelling delicious. Um, so next we will uh, start uh, blanching our cabbage leaves. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our head of cabbage. We're going to go ahead and uh, put it in the water here. I'm going to put it in kind of gently because we don't want to splash ourselves with boiling water. And uh, in a couple minutes we'll take off uh, the, the couple top leaves and we will repeat this until we've removed all uh, leaves from this head of cabbage. So now this has been uh, in for just a minute or two. So I'm just going to take my knife and um, oof. So I'm just going to take these, these leaves here. And the outer leaves should now, the outer leaf should now easily peel away. And I can just use my knife to cut it off. And let's see about the next one. There we go. So you have two, and this is then going to go back in for another couple minutes. While this uh, goes in for a couple minutes, I'm going to get the first one going. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, put a nice uh, spoon of filling on it, uh, and then this is, then we fold it and roll it up. Like that. Do the same with the other. And and we'll keep doing this with all of them. Uh, the next step is I will just uh, kind of lightly flour these, and then these will go into the pan uh, once the oil is hot, and I will just lightly fry them. So I managed to accidentally um, splash a little bit of the water from the cabbage into the oil, so it's spattering a little bit, but uh, now that I have the oil hot, I'm just going to take these and I'm going to gently fry them on both sides. And then I'll put them on another plate. Um, so this will continue to go and um, as basically I start to move these into sort of an assembly line approach. So here we have uh, these, again, lightly fried. Um, the flour browns a bit, which is important because as we stew these in a bit, uh, that flour will help thicken the sauce. And we'll just keep doing this uh, as we go through. And uh, it won't be very long before we're ready to uh, stew these. Now the general rule is that when we're out of um, 
filling, we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, pour the rest of the oil, uh, the oil and flour into this pot. And I'm going to go ahead and add all of the, um, I'm going to add all of the, uh, all of these um, stuffed cabbage pieces to this pot. I'm going to try to fill, pack them in about as tightly as I can. The reason for that will become obvious in a moment. There we go. And then I'm going to cover the, I'm going to drizzle some water over these and we're going to simmer them for in about 40 minutes or so. So I'm just going to add this a little bit at a time. That will probably be enough. Um, basically, uh, there's basically enough water in here that we can basically steam these. Then I'm going to put a lid on and we'll go ahead and let these steam. So I changed my mind just a little bit. I decided to add a bit more water and I'm going to let these um, heat up and simmer in place. I'm still going to put a lid on them at first, um, but they should start simmering not very long, and if I need to add a bit more sour cream and tomatoes, then that's what I'll do. So now that this is uh, simmering, I'm going to go ahead and add my tomato. And just a little bit of tomato there, and we're going to let this simmer again. Um, once this is fully simmered for about 40 minutes, we'll add the sour cream, uh, bring up the heat a bit, and let it thicken. Okay, so now these have... Um, been simmering for about 40 minutes, so I've just turned up the heat and now there it's in a rolling boil. And I'm going to start pulling these out. Now some people, when they cook these, apparently put in some various um, other vegetables, such as shredded carrots, things like that, over the top. But you'll see we have this nice sauce that's developing. And I'm going to take, because I had to add more water and more tomato, I am going to add uh, the entire um, 200 grams of sour cream instead of the 100 grams I planned to before. So, uh, just one second. And you can see that um, by packing these so nicely, um, it means I don't actually have very much, um, I don't have very much uh, sauce as a whole. There's a little bit, but there's not a whole lot. So now I have added the sour cream, I'm just going to stir it in and then we will boil our sauce a little bit to reduce it and we'll be done. So the sauce curdled just a little bit. That sometimes happens, but um, I'm sure it'll taste very good still. I um, added, uh, I garnished it um, after adding the sauce with a little bit of um, some spring greens. Um, this is chickweed, this is blood sorrel, makes it look kind of nice. And uh, next we'll do the taste test. Now for the taste test. Of course, a lot of what you have here is cabbage. Here's some of the filling.
This is absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. Hope you enjoyed as much as I do. Um, bon appetit. Actually, boy.